Okay, good morning or afternoon, everybody. I'm, uh, oh, I just turned it on real quick. But there's so many notes that I have not covered in the last, you know, I don't know the last time we spoke. So today's July. I'll put it on the video. July something. Oh, 22nd. Okay, I was going to say 18 or something. Uh, my birthday, I don't, please, by the way, I don't like, if you say happy birthday on sites, that's, you know, that's okay, but I don't really like doing that. I just turned 60, uh, July 17th. So today is the 22nd, and I'll try to speak. It, this is going to be a teaching. It's not so much an update. Let me just, it, the last thing that said, well, let me do it was, uh, when I deal with issues, whether it's national or local or whatever, a lot of it hopefully comes out of what I refer to as social justice. The term is negative to some people, but social justice is sort of, you know, Micah, the prophet says, he hath shown thee, O man, what is good and what the Lord requires of thee. Uh, something's wrong with my eye, by the way. I don't, I don't know what it is. How to do justice and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. I like that verse from the early days of my walk with the Lord. So over time, you'll see on, whether it's YouTube or any of my platform streaming sites, I put updates, and so if you see them, sometimes they're mad and so forth. But either way, it's the issues that I feel were, you know, not good. And so one of the many... I dealt with was the port of Corpus Christi. I felt they did a lot of abuse to, they wanted to develop and so forth to build a bridge, which at the time I said, I said, I believe I said, this is not a prophecy, but I stated at least once, maybe more, I said, that bridge is never going to be built. Now I stated that, I don't know, three years ago, four years ago, and I and so I said it's never going to be built. And I said I'm just letting you know, I will not see to live. I will not live to see the bridge built. I said and that that's not not saying I'm going to die real quick, but I said there'll be many, you know. And then I just covered. I said there's problems with it. And then over time, of course, there's pushback not just against me, but people that were critical of the new bridge they're building in Corpus Christi. And the way things went about by the poor Corpus Christi, so forth. So then there were delays. And I knew, uh, well, now this today, basically, TxDOT, uh, Texas Department of Transportation, and the ones that they closed construction on the bridge because of problems. And initially, when it came out a few days ago, the local community, I understand, they don't want because it's been somewhat of a disaster people that have been to the city of corpus years ago if they come now so all the roads have been rerouted downtown it's very very difficult i have a daughter that works for the city and she says sometimes people will come in to their to their place where she works and they'll be saying what did you do we couldn't even find so the streets are all rerouted but either way I, if it was a prophecy, it's pretty much coming to pass because TxDOT finally said we have a problem with the way the bridge is being built. And what that will entail will be lawsuits and so forth. So it looks like, you know, and then they said your current bridge is still safe. So that just came to my mind because I said that was going to happen. And that might have been three years ago when I said that. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on that. A few interesting notes, and maybe I'll hit on Jeremiah. Uh, the other morning, as I was reading through different chapters in the morning, I there's so many I could cover, but when I hit Jeremiah 30, there's a scripture, a few I quote out of that chapter. And the city will be built upon the ruins thereof, and the palace shall remain. This restoration, you know, it's historically context about the nation of Israel. But there's so many things about the kingdom of God that we see in those prophecies of the Old Testament. So the city's going to be built again upon the heap, upon the ruins, and the palace shall remain. And so the, in the kingdom of God, in your life, in my life, in the process of ministry and so forth, there comes times where the day of the Lord, 
the day, Paul the Apostle says, the fire will try every man's work. And if any man has built uh, things that, you know, wood, hay, stubble, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as by fire. So if you built upon that life things that did not count, there'll come a day or a judgment time for the purpose of God to redeem your soul. And many of the cases I pray for are in that situation. And so you suffer loss. I've noticed in the Christian walk and experience, when people suffer loss, they don't want to deal with loss. And sometimes they think of ways to say, well, it wasn't really a loss. And I have found it's better to say there are times where you will suffer loss. And I'm not giving a negative confession. But I'm saying there are times where things, you say, you know, there was some value or something, and it is now gone. And it's okay to go through that process. So I would encourage you. But then he says, but if you built upon the foundation of Christ, it's also written in the Gospels, Jesus teaching about the man who built on the sand and on the solid foundation. And Corinthians, Paul says, but if you built upon the foundation of Christ, he will receive a reward. So what's going to happen is the day of judgment, the fire, Paul says, Corinthians, will try every man's work. But the day will declare it. I like that. You have no need to speak anything. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, the kingdom and people of God. Paul the Apostle said to the Corinthians, said to one of the churches, he said, For from you, <coughs> you sounded out the word of the Lord, so I have no need to speak anything. Apostolic building is the communities of God, the quote, local churches, which are the communities of God, the people you meet to the Lord, and they become communities of God. From them sounds out the word of the Lord. So Paul didn't see his need to have to preach on a regular basis. You know, he preached. And, but from you sounds out the word of the Lord. But the man who built upon the good, the foundation of Christ, the day will declare it. I like that. The day will declare it. So people have been suffering loss. And it's because the purpose of God is for your soul to be redeemed. Not just what we understand as being saved, which is a wonderful understanding, but the process of God cap captivating you and you being brought into the presence of God. But now I'm, I hope to read a few in Jeremiah. The other morning, just a few days ago, sometimes when you're praying early, happens quite often, uh, you get an impression. Now, I don't want to say visions. Some people refer to them as visions. But this has happened so many times, you know, with many of us. And the impression I had at, and during prayer, and I get up early, you know, today, not that four was not early. Okay, three is early, two is early. And uh, I saw I was going to see my friend Furman. And I thought, oh, the image I had was I'm going to give him something. I'm going to take him to eat um, some kind of thing. And then I was going to say to him, if he said, like, why are you doing this for me? And I felt the Lord was saying, you're going to just say, because you deserve it. Because you're a child of God. If that was the whole exact thing I saw. Now, I didn't see Furman that day, but I saw him yesterday or the day before. As soon as I seen him. <laughs> And this has happened this way before. He said, John, somebody, uh, a friend of his, he gave me a Harley Davidson. Now, I don't know all the details, but as he's telling me, I didn't explain it to him. And Furman says, I asked him why. And the friend of Furman said, because you deserve it. And look, that was exactly what I saw. I didn't see it was going to be a Harley. So that's happened before. And I just, that came to my mind. I said, you know, I should mention some of these things. So God basically wanted to affirm to people that are going through things that because they're children of God, God does not overlook the sin in life. But at times they need to be reaffirmed that because they're children of God, 
they deserve it, if you will. See, we all have what we have by the grace of God, all of us. It's not we deserve it as our own works, you understand, but because we have that relationship. Now, that was one thing I wanted to mention. Uh, I have so many notes. Let me look. Uh, we're, we're reading Proverbs. Quote, oh, I hit some verses. Did you, it happened with Jeremiah 17 the other week. I don't exactly remember now what it's speaking about. But right before I read, I was reading in the evening. And as I was praying before I read, I had this whole image of the captive, the prisoner, everything he would go through. And it was just in my mind, sort of like an intercession. I'm in Jeremiah 30. Let me get a second. It was like an intercession thing. And then the first three verses, that was the only chapter I read, I think that meant, was exactly what I had interceded for. Exactly what I was thinking about. The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron, with the point of a diamond. And I was thinking the captives, the iniquity is engraved. The enemy has managed to engrave that. And I was thinking that. It is graven upon the table of their heart and upon the horns of your altars. And that was where I was praying in intercession, if you will, for the captives. I said, oh, the, the addiction is ingrained in them. That's the struggle. Well, and so, O oh my mountain, I will give this. Let me go back to uh, Jeremiah 30. So that's how oftentimes God will speak to us. He will show us something, and we might not even be aware at the moment. And then, like, right away, you read the scripture. Now, the one I'm, we're going to get to in Jeremiah 30, as I was reading it on that, there's a few I quote, but the palace is going to remain. And there were, I looked up, and all the verses I have, but it's in the other room. And right away, I saw three verses scattered throughout my walls that were about the palace. Different ones. And I thought, oh, Maybe I'm supposed to talk on Jeremiah, but I didn't want to. And after I saw three of them, I thought, I think I'm supposed to speak on this. Because I don't keep all my verses ordered. You know, I just look up and I'm like, wow. And so then I'm cleaning in the morning. This was a few days ago. That same morning, though, this was on my, I put it in here. Somebody left this. And I never see these. We don't have these at the house. It's Jeremiah 29, which was one chapter off. It was a garden guy that I guess left this on the door. It's a Christian guy, do, does yards. It was like an ad, but it was far enough the thoughts that I think toward you. So either way, I thought, oh, that's Jeremiah. Let me do it, which we're doing now. I had an uh, impression this last week of one of my friends, and I will not give the name, but I thought, and I have many, okay. But I thought, oh, he's, he's going to head down. It's, it's going to come to an end for him. Just a friend, I won't mention. And then I heard yesterday that the police had come up to the mission, Timmons, and they had a picture of them. They didn't have the face. The, I wasn't there, but they were trying to identify someone who was killed. And I guess his head was smashed in so bad they just had, the people were telling me they showed the photos to try and ID who it is. And then somebody mentioned a name that they think it might be. And I thought, oh, that was the friend I'm thinking of. Now, I won't say because I don't know for sure. But what I had, and I was praying for him the last, you know, because I normally pray. But I had that sense that Tom was running out. Just because, and I helped him for many years. If it happens to be him. Might not be. So we pray when we get these impressions. Uh, Bob Coleman, he died. Bob was an older Christian man that lived here for many years. Uh, he might be on a few videos. And he passed away last week. He knew the Lord, Bob. He was like a laborer, worker. But he was homeless, living in his truck. But he finally got a trailer or an RV that he was living in. And then he passed away. Uh, well, that's the lady which... I shouldn't do that one. I was at Timmons. I couldn't figure it out real quick. That's the mission. 
And so I gave money. I give money away. And then people get mad. Not everybody. But then I just hand it out. You know, if I have it on me, the money I'm going to give that day, whoever. Sometimes it's in the store. Because the people in front of me, a few times, they didn't have the money. I said, oh, here, this is the offering. I said, I give it away every day to people. That... But then uh, I realized I gave it away the other day. Every day I give it away. And uh, some lady, I gave it to, I guess, I don't know her name, but she got the offering, you know, the day before, and I guess she was mad. And sometimes people say, you should give it to me or whatever. And then as uh, she must have seen me giving it to whoever I gave it to. And then as we were sitting there, she said, <laughs> and I didn't understand that first. And she's talking to me and a few of my friends. <laughs> she says, well, you know, the movies of Jesus, the ones with the long hair, they don't know about God. <laughs> of course, I got long hair. And she says, it's always the short hair ones that they know about. <laughs> and then I oh, she's mad. I give them my, I didn't, all I said was, you know, I didn't say it to her, but my friend heard me. I said, you know what my favorite verse is? Now, please, don't be offended. I said, let the women keep silent in the church. And Motorcycle Mike left. But either way, I was just kidding, okay? I real, I picked up on it at that moment. That she was just, she wanted the dollar. And it went to, I gave multiple ones. But, all right, that I wrote that as a quick note. Oh, George. See, I got a lot of notes here. Uh, I, when I went to get the offering at my local bank, I cut down a little road right where George used to sit. My friend George, who died. And I very rarely go right past the spot where George used to sit. I pass it up on the main street a lot. And I look that way and like, I know George accepted the Lord. We know people have struggles in life. So I say, hey, George. So that day, because I had to go get the offering to give to the homeless, I passed right his spot, right where Wells Fargo Bank is. I said, hey, George, my brother, I said, God, uh, receive my friends. Receive my friends. As soon as I got to 10 minutes, I saw Claire, who's a friend of mine, but I ain't seen her in a while, maybe a few months. And she told me, as soon as she, uh, Pastor John, Preacher John, George has something to say to you. Of course, George died now over a year ago. And I thought that's interesting. I said, just said, hey, George. And it, I guess a message she never gave me. She knew we were good friends with George. So George says, thank you for the time you spent with us, sitting with us, hanging out with us, the park in the streets, and just spending time with us. And I said, that's funny, Claire, because I just, you know, quote, talked to George, saying, you know, and I get a message back, I guess, right? Uh, short here, Jesus. All right, let me try and do it. Uh, I covered that, the bridge. It might be a few. Uh, the prophecy, I like, and, and like I said, I had quoted that scripture as well as many, you know, but the power show. So let's do a little bit. Uh, I might just call it Jeremiah 30 or whatever teaching. This is the, what, 22nd? The word of the Lord came to Jer Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus speak of the Lord God of Israel. Write thee all the words I have spoken unto thee in the book. For lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel. Now, will cause... Uh, I write personally like you, but then to return to the land that I gave to your fathers. I quote that all the time. You have uh, the promise. You return to the land of your fathers and possess it. And these were the words that the Lord spoke. As you now, uh, let me cut down to verse 18, Jeremiah 30. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tents. Of my friends live in homeless camps, tents and have mercy on his dwelling places. And this city shall be built it, build it again upon her own heap, and the palace shall remain after the manner thereof. And out of them shall proceed thanksgiving in the voice of them that make merry, and I will multiply them, and they shall not be few. So many promises to Abraham, I read Genesis. <laughs> not right now, but in my 
regularly. I'll glorify them. They should not be small. Jesus said in John 17, the glory that the Father gave to him, he gave to the people, that the Spirit of God, the glory of God, being children, I ascend to my Father and your Father, my God and your God. And that's the same thing. That's Jeremiah 30, 19. I will glorify them. They should not be small. Their children also shall be as aforetime, and their congregation shall be established before me. It's another one I quote. I got that written. And I will punish all that oppress them. And their nobles, I got this one, their nobles shall be of themselves, and their governors shall proceed from the midst of them. I got that written somewhere. And I will cause him to draw near, and he shall approach unto me. God, when, when you get up to pray for a few hours in the morning, you say, oh, that must be some spiritual thing. God, blessed is the man whom thou causest to approach unto thee. So why would somebody get up? Oh, I got the extra hour if it's three, which today it was four. But yesterday I got up, so, oh, that's one, it's three, I'm not that tired. They'll give you an extra hour and a half or something like that. Does that mean you're spiritual? People miss it. God gives that as a gift. Blessed is the man whom you call and draw unto your presence. It's a gift of prayer. And when people receive gifts, it does not make those people any better than anybody else. Paul tried to teach that to Corinthians. He said, if you learn something from me or Apollos or whoever, or there's a gift, we're all just ministers that God used by whom you believe. So that was a difficulty in the church to, to understand that if somebody has a particular gift, prophecy, visions, whatever it is, it's, you know, that hinders the Spirit of God doing more of those things because people are still enamored with the vessels, you see. Their children also shall be established, their congregation, and their nobles shall proceed from the south. And ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. Look at this. That's the end of Jeremiah 30. Uh, Behold, the whirlwind of the Lord goeth forth with fury, a continuing whirlwind. It shall fall with pain upon the head of the wicked. The fierce anger of the Lord shall not return unto me. So, the kingdom of God, the palace is going to remain. You will go through the fire. Uh, you know, that's a process of life. Uh, nations, kingdoms, things would be shaken. But those who are building upon the foundation of Christ, that in the gospel where Jesus said, the man that hears my words and does not do them is like someone who built a house on the sand. And the storm came, the rain came, the hurricane, the floods, and the fall of that house was great. So there was something built, you see. It was there. It looked as big, if you will, as the one that was on the rock. But the fall was great. Unless the Lord build a house, they labor in vain that build it. Unless the Lord keep the city, the watchman wake up in vain. But then the man who built upon the solid rock, the same storms came, wind and everything else. But it remained. See the, the verse in Corinthians. The day will declare it. That day, that fiery day, the day of judgment, it will declare. Because if any man's work is burned, he will suffer loss. But he himself will be saved. Yes, so is by fire. So the storm, in some cases, is going to take everything away, if you will, that you knew that you spent time in your life building. If it was in vanity, all that passes away, okay? So I would encourage you, I would exhort you, the city will be built upon the heap. What's the, it's what's left after the fire, you understand? It's the things that are left. I, I, I have raised a form from the north, Isaiah, from the rising of the sun who will call upon my name. He will come upon princes as upon mortar, and the coastlands shall wait for his law. So the word of the Lord goes forth to the nations of the earth, 
We bless the nations of the earth. We speak the word of the Lord to the nations of the earth. And the gospel, John, in the letters, first, second, third John, but John says, if that which you have heard from the beginning remain in you, and then you're going to continue. What did you hear in the beginning of your journey with God? The revelation of God, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believes not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. I was telling from the other day we were talking. I said, I like the last two verses from, it was in some of the things he brings up a lot. But I said, the last verse and the last two chapters of John, whatever those chapters are, what, whatever. But the last two chapters of the Gospel of John, the last verse or two in both of those chapters is kind of the same. It says, many other miracles Jesus did which were not written in this book, but these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. And I said, John is so full. In the beginning of John chapter 1, to as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And then you go all through John. So what would you hear in the beginning of your journey with God? The message, the knowledge of the glory of the Lord is going to cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. There is in all the great things God does, Jesus even said to the disciples when they came back and said, Jesus gave them authority, cast out devils, heal the sick, raise the dead, do all those wonderful works. They came back rejoicing. Even the demons are subject unto us to your name. In his testimony. I saw Satan like lightning fall from heaven. But don't rejoice in that particular gift that you do have to cast out demons, or whatever other gift it is, prophecy, vision, dream. But rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The simplicity of John 3.16. Rejoice in that relationship that God loved the world so much that he gives only begotten son. And if you have transitioned away from that message, you see, over throughout your life. And you say, oh, now I'm this, now I'm that, and we don't judge anybody. But I'm just saying, even Christians sometimes, their identity, they say, oh, I started in this denomination, maybe a wonderful one. And then, but you know, then something happened. I had this experience, which is great. But then they identify, I'm not this anymore, but I'm that. So their identity, or some identify, you know, the wonderful gifts, the ministry gifts God has put in the church, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Wonderful Ephesians for the perfecting the saints, for the work in the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And then some learned about that, and that became their entire, you know, it's all nonstop talking about the apostle. What a wonderful gift. I believe in the gifts of the Spirit and the ministry gifts. You know, doctrinally, we see them in Scripture. and they're, But then there's the whole movement. Everybody was, don't rejoice in that simplicity. Paul said to the Corinthians, when I was with you guys, I knew nothing. I preached nothing but Christ crucified. <laughs> and your faith, Corinthians 15, your faith would be, this is the gospel. Christ died, was buried, rose again. So let's let let's make sure we stay focused on what the message is as we do deal with other issues and things in life. So I pray, uh, Father, let me end with this. Read that chapter. It's 29 minutes. That's uh, Jeremiah 30. There's some good verses in there, okay? The kingdom of God, I can't t teach it all, but what we see in that chapter is so many prophetic, messianic prop prophecies of the, Messiah, David, the promise of the kingdom being fulfilled through Christ, son of David. There's this work and process that takes place throughout life, but that God would be all in all, you see. God would be in all. That was the one I wrote. <laughs> I've been reading a little bit of Jeremiah. The last chapter of Jeremiah I read was 
Oh, I think I have it in this. I got five of them. The last one of Jeremiah, I read the one with that one. Let's see, this is Jeremiah 30. Didn't I just do 30? The word that came to Jeremiah. No, there's one I have on, I'm the almighty God. Oh, I forget. I, I just read it. it. It's true. It's just, I don't remember where that one is. Okay, so let's, I'm God almighty. It's somewhere I just, just was reading it. I'm God almighty. No one. Okay, let me pray. I can't find that one. Father, I thank you for all of our friends. I pray today, Lord, that the word of the Lord will go forth, even in some of the local issues. There's no judgment. It's the word of the Lord goes forth in all the earth for the purpose of God. Let your kingdom come. All the cities and nations of the earth, <laughs> they will all fail. Regardless of government, kingdom, politics, they all, there is no foundation in that. So I pray that the people would be encouraged if maybe they went through the fire. And all they see is a heap. Maybe there, maybe the storm came, and there's just nothing left but, just like I burnt all these, I had to burn all the my bamboos. It's hard to kill them by killing. Them. So I burnt a lot of fire there, and I noticed it's like a heap because all those burnt roots. And it's like a dead land there, like because you had to, to kill those bamboos, you had to make it a dead land. And then that scripture came to my mind because it used to be all sand, but the dead roots of that bamboo made it solid. Like you can walk on it like a hill. And that's what the verse came to my mind. So the fire you have been through, there's something left, you know, it used to be a firefighter. So there's, a, there's something burnt at that bottom so many prophets promises about out of the ashes okay so the city will be built again upon the heap and the palace shall remain jesus said i given you a kingdom palace throne like my father has given me blessed is he that overcomes for he will inherit all things and i will be his god and he will be my son Okay, amen. Let me, uh, God bless her. I don't know next time I, I didn't plan on making any more videos, people, but God bless everybody. Let me see if I can show this.